Hey guys, welcome back to Max Plane Donor for Unification. Today I have another faction guide for you, this time for the Sandy Boys, <laughs> the Thousand Sons. The Thousand Sons are your Chaos Marines and some demons of the Chaos God Siege, the god of magic, trickery and hidden plans and whatnot. So they are all about it. They are unique uh, in, in uh, a lot of ways as well. They have quite a lot of abilities and spells, you could say. So a lot of magic, a lot of possibilities, but uh, you need to know how to use them. Uh, it is somewhat similar than, let's say, for example, Tau, where you have a lot of uh, special units in the early game that is uh, that are really good at one thing and really bad and at another thing. So you need to choose your opener uh, depending on what your faction is or your player, even the player uh, sometimes have preferences what they play. Um, to uh, counteract what they uh, try to do, for example. Okay, now we jump as usual in a safe game where we talk about all the finicky little detailed things. And here we are in the safe game where we see all the beauty of Thousand Suns and the different unit types. Um, but yeah, as usual, we'll first talk about resources. The resources are, as you see, the standard requisition and power, the acquisition of these is also pretty standard. Um, you get requisition from points and listening posts and whatnot and power from your generators. The generators are a little special in the sense that they provide 12 power instead of 10. Um, and you can support up to nine. That's why I have built nine here uh, of these rune scribed constructs um, per HQ. So you have a lot of power options the only downside is that they, or oh, let's say it's on the later part, it's a downside, they increase in cost. Like uh, if you have um, nine up already, it costs over, th over, th over 200 uh, requisition a piece, which is still okay for that they g give you plus 12. Um, do you see the resource upgrades are also standard and do we see it here? No, because ah, I haven't upgraded it fully. I mean here, you see it's 20. Uh, it's 27 for your um, LP3 instead of the usual 24. That's also a little difference, but that's pretty much it for that. Um, the uh, unit caps you see here are also standard. You have squad cap, you have vehicle cap, you start off with 10 zero. You have upgrades two for infantry, four for vehicles, for plus five uh, each, and you get plus two um, vehicle cap for your occult forge which is your vehicle production building and you get plus one for infantry cap for your various squad leaders which are your um, deformed or supreme sorcerer and whatnot they all give you plus one for your infantry cap yeah that's the resource and units caps out of the way let's start with the buildings and I'm a little um, a disclaimer kind of uh, there are a lot of abilities and passive abilities. Uh, I will most certainly forgive, forget one or two abilities here and sometimes have to read through some descriptions because I know a lot of these abilities but I also have forgotten probably quite a lot of them and need some refreshers. Um, you have your HQ. That's pretty much your um, standard HQ. Gives you um, your builders which are very special. Uh, the cultists which are your capital unit later on uh, like a hero squad chosen and two heroes as well unit cap upgrades are also located here in tier one you can decide if you go for warp gates for infantry or the demon gate for the demons and then you have your dark library which kind of acts like your um armory dark library is special in that it only costs you 100 requisition and 75 power and you get some resources back from that so it's really cheap um, limited to two and um, all these three uh, buildings have auras around them. The Dark Library increases the uh, uh, recharge rate of abilities. The uh, Warp Gate here uh, enhances the mobility of Rubik Marines. They are really slow uh, in general and here um, you have in the Demon Gate um, the demons get uh, regeneration and gain instability protection. So the demons, uh, we will talk about them later, have instability effects. Um, in tier 2 you can then build a occult forge for some vehicles and once you're tier 3 you can build the, build the altar of siege which gives you your late game uh, units. Does it have an aura? I don't think so, no. Um, 
something about the dark library before we uh, talk about the defensive buildings and whatnot. As it is so cheap and you get resources back, there might be a good idea to, if you have a listening post around, to build it like in the way, like for example, Necrons like to build their um, forbidden archive because it's like cheap 2600 HP the enemy needs to uh, chew through before getting to a listening post. Even if you have like a listening post here and uh, you could build it like here to protect it a bit and you get the added benefit that if your sorcerer or other units are around their abilities recharge faster. So even projects in control are around itself so you have uh, some more space to build and stuff. Uh, for example, the turrets, um, as we talk now, are limited to their um, control zone as they are really strong. They are also very expensive, as you can see here. 150 requisition, 75 power is quite a lot, but they do quite a lot of damage. They have two possible upgrades. This one gives them uh, more DPS and this one makes them invisible. These are tier 3, so really late upgrades in that, but uh, the general turret is really good as well. Um, your listening posts do a fair share of damage, are expensive to upgrade, but as I said, the uh, last upgrade gives you plus, seven, uh, plus 27 in instead of 24, so it's more income, and you can choose to detonate your listening posts once they are tier... once they are once upgraded once? Yeah, then you can choose to detonate them. Problem is, you can only detonate them if they have a sizable amount of their health left, and I would say as long as they have a lot of HP, I would stand, let them stand because A, they produce resources as long as they are around, B, they shoot while they are alive, and C, I, maybe I, am, um, pos I have the possibility to uh, rescue them, send something to repair, uh, send some units to fend off the attack. Like there's like no scenario in my head where this warp detonation is a good idea. I have... Um, a few suggestions or one suggestion about it on on my list the list uh, to make the threshold you need for HP a little lower like like only 10% or something that you can make it like a last boom like if they attack then you can like, boom and then you have like this big explosion and um, make some extra uh, damage for units around so this could be a good idea uh, now you see this is all gone <laughs> so this is the warp detonation uh, you can do. Um, yeah, I think this is all about the buildings. Ah, yeah, one last thing. Yeah, people um, playing Thousand Suns, they will probably know. But the buildings built by themselves. It's like the. Ah, you can't show it here because it's uh, death mode. But the buildings, uh, they need to be ticked by the Thrall Wizard and then they will construct uh, by itself, which has some really nice implications about these Thrall Wizards. Yeah, and we will also jump to them now because we jump to the units now. And the Thrall Wizards here are your builder unit, your repair unit, but they can also cap. And all this together with that uh, uh, buildings built by themselves make Thousand Suns that are normally in your heads are really slow and marching and whatever really fast at map control because you can send out your like you you build your first two buildings and send them to cap you build up to uh, three builders send them to cap and once they are capped it you can build the listing post similar to how necrons build their obelisks uh, obelisks whatever their spires or whatever once the the um, um scarab has built has captured it but they can just tick it and run already to the next so they're really slow uh, really fast at capping stuff and um, the thrall wizards also have some uh, abilities they can um so this is just a uh, material structures it's just a fancy uh, icon for build structures they can repair they can get a thrall wizard leader uh, later on and they get uh, a few abilities the first one is bolt of change they more or less start with this ability in tier one you can use it to um, boom to make some minor damage against vehicles, uh, minimal damage against other targets. This works. This um, boils the self armor has minimal effect on flesh. So it's just a damage spell against vehicles or buildings, or only vehicles or buildings. So it does some damage. Not the greatest damage, but you see the recharge rate is really fast as once you have the upgrades for it and whatnot. Um, and it's just use it when there's a vehicle or building around you do not need to ground target it you can also target it 
um, directly on a building or a um, vehicle so it has a homing missile you could say always use it when you have the chance for it then you have breath of unlife this is um, a heal probably affects the sorcerer lord and arman yes if you click it then the sorcerer lord and arman gets healed i think transfer life essence to the scene creator sorcerer so they lose life they get life and if you um you need to click on it yeah let's give Ariman some health yeah you see they lose some health in the process they can also die uh, for it i think at least one model the last one is a warp storm the warp storm you need to research it is also um you see like they take a lot of damage the warp storm um you need the thrall wizard and the full squad there's an upgrade in tier three i think which increases the squad size and gives them this upgrade this warp storm does quite a lot of damage around the squad but um, at a great cost like a big uh, storm ability and come on poof they all die so it's like a suicidal attack and very expensive suicidal attack as I said you need to have all models and a leader so <laughs> it could be like a last ditch effort if you run into an enemy or whatnot but if you lose a model or two uh, I think you cannot cast it and now we come to the commanders. Um, we will talk about the sorcerers in a second, but we, let's talk about the, let's say, easier commanders. They all have various abilities. You have the Icon Barrow. The Icon Barrow is interesting in many ways. You produce them in the warp gate. No, in the, is it the warp gate? Yeah, the warp gate. So he is a marine of sorts, a Rubik marine. Um, Rubik marines, we will talk about them later, are soulless. Um, armor you could say no body inside so they uh, do not uh, no fear so they are all immune to breaking other than the actual sorcerers um, he has a passive uh, that um, gives regeneration for the squad he's attached to and each icon barrier can up can have up to two decrease the cost of your demons so it's a way to have a mixed build order. You could say get an icon barrel, he's tier two. If you have him up, your demons get uh, lower in cost, but only the production cost, reinforcement cost is not affected. Then he has two things, bolt of change, corrective bolt of engine that serves a millimeter. Oh, so it's a basic, the same bolt as the um, Thrall Wizards have. And he has this one, the blasted standard of renewal. This thing, um, has a global cooldown so you cannot have it on uh, both icon barrels and what it does it um, accelerates reinforcement half the time needed to requisition army troops but it um, attached to the squad it uh, re how should I say refreshes abilities of a squad he's attached to I'm not sure if this also is true for like the more or less standard um, abilities like jumping or teleporting but we will send him just over here to test this out in uh, later when we talk about infantry. Then you have two sorcerers, uh, two commanders here. You have the Herald of Siege, which is a new addition in this version. The Herald of Siege is more or less the Herald of Siege you know from Chaos Demons. He has his floaty disc, um, does some attacks here. These attacks get more devastating with one of the demon upgrades. I think with the second demon upgrades, he gets like bigger bolts. He has the Gift of Siege, which does random damage to a target. And then he has power of change with if you click it the uh, squads around him get uh, additional additional um, ranged damage both melee and range so it's just a um fixing sense and large around the castle and lasts for a long duration so always click it if you're in an engagement and have units around this is a must have and also this uh, either on a squad or a unit to get some random damage done maybe it does a lot of damage you don't know you have to muta mutated sorcerer. One thing I need to check. I cannot. Um, I have the uh, lot of change already, but um, I will tell you which units can transform. He can transform to the lot of change, similar to how the bloodthirster is summoned from the chaos marines. Like he will explode and then the uh, um, thing uh, appears. You have. Uh, attention has magical aura of command enchanting most physical skills of the squads he's attached to so more damage for the squads he is attached to he can teleport he gets more abilities the more uh, upgrades you get for it. there's like deformed upgrade which also increases the capabilities of your mutated squad but also like the mutated sorcerer basically uh, enhances mutations you could say 
has a psychic glance, uh, cause enemy to slow down and lose health over time. Boom. In a, in a line, I guess. Yeah. Like all the, the beams, uh, all the units that, that beams travel through gets affected by it, losing health and gets slowed. Then has the gas gasps of chaos. I need to read it because I don't know um, about this again. Lifts the entire squad, causing damage to them as the riders above ground. The squad members cannot move or fight back. Is it stun and damage? And uh, health drain. So this is really, really impactful. You can stun <coughs> uh, an enemy squad, deal damage and heal your mutated sorcerer. So it's like a three in one ability. And the last one, Vico Mortis, is really uh, one that uh, has been talked about as well. Increased fighting powers, but come with a grave cost. So when cast on the squad, their range, the melee fighting capabilities increase for a short amount of time. However, the spell. Ba -ba -ba -ba, terrible price. Collect the stone. Loses health over time. If the squad dies, the health is taken by the mutated is also. It's like uh, increased damage for uh, losing some health. So. Something I would always use, to be honest. They glow red. And he does not lose health. Interesting. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is your commanders. And now we will talk about your... Um, the, the sorcerers, you could say. And uh, now it... Ah, so it does a, a, a chunk of damage once, once the ability runs out. Interesting, interesting. You have a Sorcerer Lord, a tier 1 Sorcerer Lord, it starts with a Doom Bolt, can be attached to a squad. Uh, one thing about the Sorcerer, he is one of the best uh, tier 1 commanders, although he looks like he's a Sorcerer dude, he has quite a lot of damage in melee and he has quite a high stun chance with his maze stuff thingy here, so do not enter melee with him. You will almost always lose, there's only a few commanders who could maybe win, one of which is <clears throat> the IG command squad because it's just multiple uh, entities. Uh, yeah, he has Doom Bolts and he has the uh, opportunity to choose three specializations uh, Illusionist, Summoner, and Warlock. We will talk all about the different abilities um, as we go through here. Um, he always starts with Doom Bolts, and as you can see here, there are three additional spells you can level through. Um, you can upgrade the Doom Bolts, for example, as well. These are tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. And you can only have up to six spells. And you start with one Doom Bolt, so you can only choose five of these. So you choose wisely because the different um, devils do different things as well. Um, okay, we will, uh, however, talk first about the uh, Warlock. It is Warlock is about dealing damage and controlling the fight. You have, of course, Doom Bolts. You have Tainted Bolt, which is a single target um, ability, which does good damage uh, to single targets. Curse, uh, what does it also? Reducing speed and perception, so basically reducing sight range and uh, slows, which is really nice. And this is the one that always uh, is chosen first because it's just so, so good. Malfizio Pavoni is a chain ability, but not only like the chains from the Chaos Source. So if you get the second level of it, it makes a big explosion once the chains end. So the squad chained cannot run away because it's chained and then gets a big explosion at the end. The explosion damage got toned down a bit because let's say if you play against Imperial Guard, it would take down the whole squad, no matter the upgrade. So it was a bit too high. It is now uh, been lowered. And the last one is Force Armor, which um, gives them gives the Source Lord big armor, but... Um, hey, it, 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 will holds me wait together. a second. It is also armor value temporarily increased, offers better protection. Unfortunately, also affects renders him rigid and bulky and hinders movement. Uh, I don't see him moving slower. I only see him getting invisible. This is maybe a uh, um, a bug, but I, I, I will um, consult the devs about it if this is intended and it just looks funny, or if it is uh, indeed a bug because it looks like invisibility, but it should be force armor. There are three levels um, with. Uh, what does it improve in better protection and greater duration? Strong enveloping force field that protects cast from knockdown. So this one also protects from knockdown, which is nice to have later on. Let's see the last or the, the second one I will talk about is the uh, also a fan favorite. You could say the summoner specialization, um, like the pro pro players, the most players 
um, that try to win <laughs> and not have fun <coughs> use the uh, warlock specialization I myself also like many people uh, like the uh, summoner specialization because I just like summoning things here yeah, you can summon a seeing skull which is similar to the um, ability from the chaos lord where you have this uh, thingy and uh, that is um, Infiltrated and can detect the funny thing about the second level of it that you, it is map wide You can put it like from here and a corner and have one it has a duration However in form that it has uh, Loses health over time and it is if it is spotted it can also be taken down then you have a toad like spiteful whatever demon thingy here You see here the range of it can I can I see the range isn't the greatest and what the biggest problem here is the health health is too low to make uh, an impact even in the early game so this is why this is not chosen uh, for the most time and if you go summoner most of the time it's more or less just demon summoning which summons a demon and look at the top cost the demon costs you squat um, cost I do not know if you cannot cast it when because of it I think it uh, only prevents you from building more it's a melee uh, demon spawn with a hell of a lot of knockback gets uh, stronger on the levels on and later costs you more squad cap as well as gives you really uh, a, a chunky boy the enemy needs to go through and also some good damage uh, and disruption like <coughs> if you go summoner always go for the demon summoning the other ones are added benefits you might as well upgrade your uh, doom bolts for example as well so demon summoning is why you go for uh, the uh, summoning specialization and now we will need to go to uh, the first player I think yes to see what the um, illusion is the illusion is is really uh, interesting as well but um, most people do not like to use it um, it is more finicky to use you have like the invisibility which um, has three levels the first one is only invisibility for yourself the second one is a target ability I think only it's a well, improved version can affect more targets, namely all allied infantry and lesser demons. And the last one can, uh, like, be targeted to all units you think of. If you want to uh, infiltrate a big tank, you can do it. Um, the second one is the clone. It gives you uh, a clone of the sorcerer, which does some damage, I think, a fraction of its damage. Um, what does it say? Mm. If they're frail with lesser mass, endurance, combat, and perception skills, you have only one. The second one gives you two um, clones. And the last one is interesting that gives you three clones that all can show um, use lesser demon bolts. So if you have them, like the last clone ability, <coughs> it becomes really, really nice because you can, like, doom bolt the universe. And then you have confusion. The confusion is uh, similar to. Uh, no, it's not similar. But yeah, it's in, in an area of effect that where units inside will fight each other. Enemy units can be really good um, against enemy infantry blobs. And now we th will look what the second thing does. Improvement always fools enemy. It has more dire weakening effects and lasts longer. There's a small chance to reduce the firepower and defensive ability chance to fool enemies okay so this is a chance and this is an always fool and has more debuffs to the enemy around as well so um, very good spell indeed I would choose if I need to choose two spells I would go for clone and confusion clone most for most for the most part for the uh, like having a scout and having something to tank for um, in some fights which is really nice later on the doom bolt is also really really nice so, and if you thought this was a lot of spells, now comes Ariman, the Exile. Ariman uh, can teleport, has a lot of spells in his um, disposal and can use, probably also detect, because why not, I think. And, um, but I may be wrong. If it uh, can see infiltrators, yeah, he can detect, because why not. And has this Talisman of Siege um, staff here, that's an upgrade, there's like, three upgrades for your sorcerer lord and commanders i think uh, squad leaders sorcerers in general and the last one is uh, giving them this exalted relic yeah and this exalted relic is the stuff which basically silences a squad target ability yeah and can he can choose three out of these 
now let's go through them. You can summon Marines of the Damned. I will choose this one because uh, it's just so good. You summon like these Damned Marines here, which are invisible, invulnerable, and do a lot of melee damage. They have also an aura of flames around them, so they are high damage. Uh, the 400 HP doesn't matter because they are unkillable. Have in infiltrated, so you can just uh, send them to the enemy and yeah, do whatever. Um, yeah, and more bodies is always nice to have, I think. Then you have, I need to go through them because I do not remember all of them, I'm sorry. Um, winds of Chaos. Unleashes the corruption winds upon the enemy, causes damage to all in their path. So this is an AoE damage. Then you have Discs of Siege, which causes disorientation, so uh, di di um, confusion. Siege Boon. So it's a blessing upon a unit, granting them random enchantment. So this is a buff. Then you have Nightmare Prophecy, Epic Spell. So these um, two are epic and you can only have one of these epic. Um, the player loses control of Armand as he enters a deep meditation slumbers, creating horrifying areas around them. Um, back tentacles that attack all enemies. I want to show you this because it just looks so good. Just look, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I like it a lot. Um, it either stops uh, at the time or if I press Q, I think, no? Okay, I cannot cannot stop it for now. <laughs> we will go through the next one. So this, the, the Meteor Swarm is basically a open to bombardment, but Meteors, also epic, so you can choose it as well. Phantasm Killer, controls a malevolent entity that haunts the enemy squad, killing members one after another. So oh, this uh, also sounds very promising. And then we have Siege Curse, which is a terrible long-lasting curse upon the enemy a unit that causes multiple maladies, so it's a very big debuff. So now it stops. You see, like um, fourth about it is the uptime of it. You can think it's like skulls everywhere as well. Because why not? And then you have these, um, or should I say, channeling spells, blue reality, uh, hindering the sight range of all enemies globally, which is really strong. Um, mobility of all enemies lowered globally, and the last one. Ability recharge rate of all enemies reduced. So the best one is probably mobility reduction of all enemies. So you can click it and then he uh, is active as long as he's alive. It's basically, um, as I said, toggle ability or um, how you would call it in in an RPG style. And how do I, how do it uh, that I, how does it come that I always forget words? A channeling, channeling ability. So as long as it is um, active, it is it works, but you cannot do other stuff. So he's really good. If he dies and gets rebuilt, you can choose a new set of three. Whereas when your sorcerer dies, he will always come back with the set you chose. So just something uh, to think of. Whew. These were your commander units. You see a lot of different abilities and spells and whatnot. We will now talk about... Uh, I should lose uh, use and whatnot less i was told by a viewers at some point and he is totally right i should stop using it okay we will now talk about the infantry however and the first infantry you have access to is your cultists cultists as you may uh, would think of are really weak in a sense that they have low hp low damage but are really cheap the good thing or the most important thing I could say about the Siege Cultists is that they get their leader in T1.5, the Siege Cultists leaders, which makes them infiltrated. And most importantly, any leader attached to the squad will also get infiltrated. This is true for only a few units in Dawn of War, you can see here. And having this available so early in the game uh, lets you at least um, fool the AI really good, if you, <laughs> if you know what I mean. The leader also has this uh, plasma pistol and a uh, bigger thought and whatnot, so really, really nice. In tier 2, only in tier 2 you can get the weapons, the flamer and grenade launchers. The grenade launchers are really strong, um, but yeah, it's only available in tier 2 and you can only have two of them, so yeah. But infiltrated grenade launchers is always fun. In tier 1, you have access to only one other, uh, another infantry unit, that's your Rubik Marines here. The Rubik Marines, as you can see, they feel no fear because they're only... Uh, lifeless hulls filled with um, magic to move to fight the enemy. They are relatively slow and this is the faster movement speed because they have their aspiring sorcerer. The aspiring sorcerer increases the movement speed of the squad. They have one passive. Um, 
da 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 da. Give me a second, it states here. In the midst of combat, memories of their former living self sometimes emerge, filling them with battle hunger. So sometimes when fighting, they get a random damage buff, which is interesting. So you cannot use it actively, just uh, sometimes you, you, you wonder why the enemy is not dying, that's why. And yeah, they are fearless and having a fearless, like, a, a, um, yeah, it's fearless, what it's called, unbreakable, I, I like to call it, infantry early on is really, really strong, given that they are really slow. Um, they are, Spanx also has a Doom Bolt ability, which you do not need to research, does some friendly fire, but you do not need to research it. It's like grenades, but for free. And later, if you, um, how should I say, research it in tier 2, you get the warp space ability, which um, put, puts them in a space uh, thingy here, where they're really fast, and when they come out of it, they have additional health. So really good to uh, move behind the enemy and then shoot him to death because you have increased HP as well. Really good. And you have two um, warp ammunitions you could load in. This is basically your special weapons in tier 2. The uh, warp bolt ammunition that is uh, good against vehicles or let's say it's okay against vehicles and inferno bolt which is good against infantry so this is doubling down your damage on infantry and this gives you some uh, anti-vehicle options you start off with only uh, four capable heavy weapons and then later there's an upgrade which makes it to eight which is basically all units in the squad this is all t1 in tier 2 you get access to your chosen your chosen is basically a squad full of sorcerers you could think of Look at them, all with a sword and pistol, have morale, however, and they are known to lose a lot of morale. <laughs> Although they have 750, they kind of uh, lose morale really quickly. Their damage uh, in melee is really good, in range is okay, but in melee it's very, very good. And Although they may not seem the fastest, but they have abilities to close the distance. You have the first one, which is always active, you do not need to research, is warp lighting, cause the enemy to greatly slow down and take damage. And the second one, twisting paths, you need to research, I think. Um, oh no, the, the next one? No, this one. Touches the target's mind, causing them to see horrifying visions of madness. Immobilized. So this is a stun. A slow and a stun. So there's abilities how you can uh, make the difference. And then you have this one, which I found really interesting. Need to research as well. Making a ward around, which, but it... Um, to protect allies and enemy units. So it's best used if you have a blob of ranged units yourself, you put it down there and then move your sorcerers into the battle, I guess. And then you have telekinesis. Um, allows control to select enemy squad and scatters them in all direction. Basically a big disruption, minor impact damage, but yeah, it's more about the um, disruption. And all these three here, you need to research. They only start with the warp lightning ability. But yet, yeah, as it states, benefit from all upgrades from the aspiring sorcerers, like the aspiring sorcerers here, uh, are upgrades that also increases capabilities of the sorcerers. So, sorcerer upgrades affects all sorcerers. Who heard the thought? <laughs> In tier three, yes, tier three and slash tier three point five, you have uh, your mutated squads, which are basically your kind of possessed marines you could think of. Have no, are unbreakable lot of melee capabilities, no ranged capabilities, can have a leader. They have the Terror from the Shadows ability, they have it uh, right from the get-go, as far as I know. Or maybe you need one mutated upgrade, I'm not sure, we will see it in the um, tech tree later. This makes them a little slower, but they are infiltrated. And while they're infiltrated, they can still attack, so really nice to uh, use against Unit, uh, enemies that do not have infiltration and the last one is intimidate that's only available if, if they have the uh, leader i think and intimidate uh, da, 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 da. nearby infantry squads may be destructed by the insults and thus ah so this is a taunt uh, if it, they click it then uh, the enemies uh, around may want to target the mutated squad instead of un uh, different squads which is nice because they are tanky lads okay the last two um, entrance squads are both terminators. You have your Scarab occult terminators here, which um, are really nice. They are more about melee, I think. I'm not really sure. They um, have high armor, also unbreakable. Also have these memories um, passive. 
can have a supreme sorcerer which gives them access to the doom bolt and also the warp space the warp oh, space sure. yeah this is the same as the rubik marines have yeah, increasing the hp even more look at look at hp going up doom bolt can teleport if you have the there's an extra upgrade for war gate teleporters and can also gate warp Stormbolt ammunition against vehicles and Inferno Stormbolt ammunition for infantry. So they're very similar to Ruic Marines, but a lot better and can teleport. So they are really strong in that sense. And then a new squad in this version are the Sekhmet Cabal Terminators, which first look really awesome, if you ask me. And secondly, also have the Warp Space ability and the Doom Bolts from their Infernal Master and can also teleport once. You have the personal teleporters. They have heavy warp flamers, which do as what you think of a warp flamer, and a soul reaper cannon, which is a an, an uh, how should I call it? a Gatling gun? You could say must be stationary to target. Does this one uh, do something special? Can increase speed and weapon accuracy. Yeah, this is also true for increased speed for this sorcerer. Without the sorcerers, all the infantry scouts are really slow and also have this warp space ability. We will now just use the jump a bit and use the um, doom bolt and everything. I want to see if the icon bearer does um, um, recharge this, all the spells. Okay, now we have everything on cooldown. Now he comes, pays 200 resources, 100 each, click. Once he's done, okay, the teleport got also a lot recharged. It does not fully recharge it, but almost. So they can now e use warp space again. So they can basically travel um, over half of the map with this, but it costs, it costs you 100 and 100, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it has a global cooldown. So you can only use it on a singular squad. So it's strong, but it costs resources and yeah, is uh, has a global cooldown. Just note, if you want to be at a specific position and needs to be really fast, you can use it. Like use the warp space, use the teleport, recharge, and then again. So this is nice to know that it also recharges the teleport ability to almost uh, full again. Really nice. Okay, with the uh, infantry out of the way, we will now jump over to the demons. And you have a set of demons, most of them, but not all are from your... Um, Demon Gate, the deformed, the mutated squad, and the, the mutated sorcerer is also from here. But they are call, um, counted infantry if you look at the um, unit card. Your tier 1 inf um, demons are your screamers of Siege. They do not start with 11, I think they have a little lower, but if you go for the demon upgrades, their squad size increases. They are melee only, are really fast, and high damage. I tell you what, they deal a lot of damage. Is they, if they stay for a longer time uh, at your squad, they will kill it really fast. They have instability, so if they lose morale, they will not deal less damage, but they will, however, take damage over time. They can jump right off the get-go, and if you have the tier two upgrade from the demonic swoop, increases their movement speed and damage um, for the duration. Is it also the damage? Speed and damage, so they come even more, but deadly, you could say. So really deadly melee squad, uh, to be honest, really. Um, it is a little bit harder to use than your Rubik Marines because they are fast and somewhat fragile for what they are. They have a lot of health, I think, but they and are really mobile, so you need to babysit them a little bit more. In tier 2, you get access to your Horrors of Siege. The Horrors of Siege are basically more or less the horrors you know from Chaos Marines as well. You see the squad size is a lot higher with the upgrades, and they have one special thing if they die. Um, they come back as blue horrors. And you can see here, th these are more blue horrors than there was um, purple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One more. That with the demon upgrade, the chance uh, increases to have blue horrors to the point that one can even have two blue horrors, which are really interesting. And these are melee only, um, not like the blue horrors from your chaos demons. So they are melee only. But yeah, uh, free units, you could say, free units. In tier 3 you get access to the Flamers of Siege. The Flamers of Siege uh, have one role they are good at it and they are really good at it. They are good at deleting infantry and doing some morale and commander damage as well. But if they see uh, infantry they will kill it. The range is really low so they are 
uh, they are, how should I say, in danger of getting tied down or uh, attacked from afar. But uh, if they can close the distance in their very um, yeah, flamer-like range, they can just delete infantry like if there is no tomorrow. So very um, special in that. Uh, do not deal any damage to vehicles uh, as far as I know. And then you have two bigger demons. The first one is a demon prince um, of Siege. You do not need to uh, transform it. You can he produce him from the altar of Siege right away. He is a big demon with big damage. Has the breath of change, which is a breath attack basically. Flames controlling morale, troops in contact, pure energy. Basically, uh, damage. Causes massive damage against all targets in the cone area. Then you have another one, Drain Life, which is exactly what it does. Uh, you click a squad or an area and he drains life from this area, which is really nice to heal him up. The last one is Demonic Sacrifice. Uh, boosts its own health. The demon selects a lesser demon from a squad. So it needs to be a demon. Let's select this one. The whole squad gets damaged and his health gets... Does it, did it increase? The whole squad died. Holy shit. We will look at it. Now he has uh, 6, 000, uh, 7000 HP. I don't think it counts which demon squad it is. Maybe it's even if you have only one demon in the squad, it will, would still um, um, count towards it. We will check it later. Once this is recharged, we will also check his HP in a little while. We see a little buff around him, probably the, dem uh, the HP buff. And lastly, the Lord of Change, which I told you you can summon by sacrificing a sorcerer. I did not told you which all the sorcerers here, like your I um, not your Icon Bearer, your Infernal Master, your uh, Supreme Sorcerer, your Aspiring Sorcerer, and your Mutated Sorcerer are the units that can be um, used for it. And the Lord of Change has a lot of HP. Is a demon is not as good in melee combat at a bloodthirster, what you would imagine, but has a lot of abilities. It can jump. Does it have some passive abilities? It has uh, true sight, uh, seeing detectors, of course, and then it has like rain of tears. Target an area, rain corrosive, da -da -da -da. health slowly sapped away from them. Does not affect vehicles and buildings. So it's basically an AOE uh, damage over time. Soul Quake, target enemy building, opening, ah, yeah, this is last like a big damage against buildings. You need to target buildings, does a minor damage against, uh, yeah, minor damage around, but it's best used to basically um, target an enemy defensive formation, like if you see Imperial Fist defensive formation or want to snipe uh, any production, research building or whatnot, this is the use. And the last one is the Greater Wind of Change, which um, is around himself doing some damage. And the cause and victim blows. This color greens do not discern friend from foe. So it does only friend does also do friendly fire. This is maybe my biggest concern about this that it does friendly fire. Um, does it damage over time? No, it's just one blast. The damage is also not the best, but the morale damage is high. So he has a lot of abilities that you need to to use uh, right in the right circumstances or it will um, fail uh, you hard, I would say. Funnily enough, he doesn't get any maximum health. Or is it like forever? It doesn't say it how, how long it affects. It's interesting. And the morale is like broken. Ah, because they are um, uh, have, how should I say, instability. Okay, and lastly we will now jump over to the vehicles. And there are a lot of cool vehicles, you could say. This guy is somewhat showing us the backside. Okay, here you go. <laughs> In tier 2 you have access to a few vehicles. Um, your Rhino, which is basically your Rhino, has a little storm at the top and can hold four units because it's seen and he knows how to make um, space bigger than it actually is. Has some smoke launchers if researched. Also, an ex uh, uh, um, available in tier two are your Rubik dreadnoughts, which is your more or less hellfire dreadnought. So it's range only. It's like the storm boulder and all these missiles, your yeah, missiles, and you can change um, the loader to have twinning glass cannons or twinning auto cannons. 
And if you research it later on, you can pu um, pulsating warp flames around him, dealing damage uh, around it, but uh, draining health. Uh, it's a toggle ability on or off. Mm. Yes. Also have like this uh, mutated hulls. Increases health. Uh, slightly better durability weapon. So it's like health and um, armor, basically. All vehicles you can see here, apart from these. Uh, Practicus Coven. These Practicus Coven are infantry squad with vehicle, vehicle armor, that's why they are here. These are your jumped uh, discs, sorcerers, with really good damage against uh, buildings. And it states infantry and heavy infantry, but they are really good at taking down buildings as well. Uh, they have, if they have the leader Doom Bolts, they have warp time, uh, which is not warp space, it's warp time, but it's the same research, it's a research for warp space and warp time. And this increases the damage of all attacks by the, of the squad, which is really nice, you see them glow. The last one is be foul. Um, targets an enemy building to shut down resource production and its ability to fight back. So it's basically a stun, but also um, reduces all, um, how should I say, prevents the enemy from getting resource from it. So it's really good against listing posts you will think of or generators but really good against enemy HQs because most HQs gives the enemy 20 requisition which is a big blow um, so these are used for going into the enemy base doing some uh, um, harassment and stuff and going back out in a direct fight they aren't the strongest I think the uh, leader the except exemptus can also turn into the uh, lord of change okay Back to vehicles, you have also access in tier 2, you like your kind of sorcerer dreadnought, your ferrous ferrum inferno dreadnought is a melee dreadnought with a set of abilities. You can research the corrosating flames abilities, which is on this guy better because he wants to go into melee. He has entry bolts, which um, vehicle sustains random electrical damage. Da 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 da, temporarily short circuited. Yeah, there, are, there are random effects on it. We may lose control, weapon system abilities or s slow down. So it can have a multitude of effects, does not cost anything. So you want to use it as soon as you see vehicle. It can rectify um, targets one vehicle and stores some damage sustained. And the self restore, which as you stated, makes him uh, heal himself. But there's like one downside. This results in temporary ability. Uh, da, da, da. Moreover, the dreadnoughts machine spirit will sustain even longer. This results in temporary ability loss, hindering movement and severe exposure to enemy damage. So it's best used without um, uh, outside of fights, of course. And it has an aura around it. Um, command aura increases nearby a vehicle's weapon accuracy. Basically, the damage of uh, vehicles around it is increased. So. Really, really nice. Uh, this is also true for melee attacks because melee attacks also have an accuracy uh, attached to them. So if you want to use it, you can use it in a conjunction with a deceiver or um, I don't know, some other vehicles around him. Really uh, good for the auras he gives and whatnot. I like it. Can have a multi melter later on if you want to have some short range abilities instead of um, capabilities instead of melee capabilities. As we are still talking about tier 2, we have this Deceiver, which is a um, Defiler, you could think of, has like dual flamers, or four flamers, and uh, mean claws. Fires magic flames at long range. Oh, this is long for a flamer. Cannot target air. So, causes this fair crippling morale around him. So, yeah, because if you see like this thing in close, you would run away, won't you? So really good in melee, very good in conjunction with the Ferris and Family Treatment as we s s um, talked about its abilities. Uh, tier 2 is also the Flyer, which has the best voice over for all units in uh, Thousand Lands of course. Because it's me. <laughs> no, uh, other than that it's a really fast Flyer with long range but very specific, uh, how should I say, Things it is good. It goes against buildings and vehicles, and more so buildings and vehicles against infantry. It is not really good, but it's um, really nice long uh, range um, unit to uh, harass listening posts, for example, or have a long range support against enemy f uh, flyers and whatnot. So, a very good utility, and um, yeah, good in that sense. 
Whew, this is all tier 2 and if we now enter tier 3 you have access to a predator which is exactly what you think of as this battle cannon or this auto cannon and the top boulders at the side can get training glass cannons when you're tier 4 for some last cannons on the top and that's basically it um, also gets the mutated hulls in tier 3.5 you get this whirlwind which has a really nice bolt attack really accurate uh, for what it does so really nice to have has no special abilities other than that and tier 3 also you have this venerable rubik dreadnought who is uh, voiced by none other than davian the scribe of the wikia so say hi to davian <laughs> the angry box we call this here um has a hell of a lot of different weapon uh, choices to choose like heavy bolters less ca uh, auto cannon less cannon plasma cannon which is my favorite on it because this is one of the fusions in uh, the lineup of thousand suns that can have plasma cannons and the multi as well have also chorus fading flames if you want to stick it into melee um yeah really really nice and tanky dreadnought if you see it it has uh, a thousand or two two thousand more hp than your other dreadnoughts with the upgrade here um i use it mainly for um long range plasma cannon support and now we will come to the big floating elephants in the room these cool units here look at them you have the trophy craft raider which is a relic unit which is voiced by none other than Kaldaris. say hi yeah <laughs> say hi to Kaldaris. it's a floating land raider and we talked about plasma uh, guns you have two plasma guns here one of the few units as i said we have access to plasma stone bolt at the top and a twin linked heavy bolter at the top uh, at the front has smoke launches if you research and a corrupted machine spirit which is mm, da, 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 lost to, to resist most damage for the cost of speed and maneuverability i think the speed part of this is a lie yes the speed part is a lie sometimes this is the generic uh, description for machine spirits also for space marines and not all of them got the, the speed debuff um for whatever reason and then this beauty here the prosperator is your tier one titan i think yeah tier one titan unit um is an, and is a floating uh bane plate with a big old plasma cannon at the top two less cannons at the side and this are these are twin linked heavy bolters i think and this as well so you have like three twin linked heavy bolters a battle cannon a plasma cannons and two uh less cannons really really big gun uh big guns Range is also pretty good. Is this the main cannon? Yes. Boom. It's not a main cannon. This is like the battle cannon, which of course does magic instead of a big boom shots. Uh, expensive, but does not need an extra research to uh, get on the field. But here, one Titan with. <laughs> I like where they put sometimes the logos, it's like on the side here. So I like it a lot. It's. Um, it looks slow, but these these floaty bits uh, units are really fast for what uh, unit type they are. Can you get uh, out of the way, please? You see how fast they are. Maybe the, it is actually true because the, the with the machines build because it is really fast. Look at it go. Nice, faster than your standard bane blade or uh, land raider, I would say. Okay, whew, this was easier or how should i say um, better than i would have thought i would have thought that i would need to um, read more i yes i needed to read a bit uh, up a bit because there's so much stuff going on with thousand suns one of the problems uh, people starting with thousand suns is looking through all the abilities and knowing what they do i hope i gave you some insight in it um, many people thought that thousand suns are really kind of weak at least in the previous version because they lacked some uh, lack some uh, tier later tier units this got um, addressed in the the current version also giving them some really uh, cool tier 2 options as well so in generally giving them more units to choose giving them more versatility and also some more late game options for some very late games in general these are one of the stronger factions in unifications um, but not overly strong so it's a, a solid a uh, tending to s tier in my book okay with this little talk at the end we will now jump into the tech trees and here we are on the tech tree document as usual i will talk mostly 
um, about the researches first because I have in the replay always uh, researched everything uh, already. In your HQ, you merely have your um, pop cap upgrades in your barracks, the warp gate. You have uh, upgrades for your Rubik Marines and uh, I forgot what these do. They all do different stuff. It's not like uh, buff to anything, everything, more buffs to everything and even more buffs to everything. It's like one gives you more health, one gives you more damage and one gives you more speed or something like this. Um, read through yourself. In general, um, if you want to go for Rubik Marines and later on Terminators, you want to have these upgrades. These are mandatory. These aren't really expensive, at least the first one. So you want to have it as soon as you have um, time in your warp gate. For your demons, you have your demon upgrades, the demonology upgrades. These are a little more expensive, especially on the power side, but they strengthen the connection to the warp, I think increasing their uh, morale, but also increasing their health and squad size. So really nice to have. And the second, yes, the second upgrade also gives you your Herald of Siege, I think, more, uh, a better bolts, I think. If it's not the second, it is the third one. I'm uh, almost certain. And then you have here the upgrades for your um, your mutated stuff, your, your mutated squad here and your mutated sorcerer. The mutated sorcerer you see, just a quick peek over here, your mutated sorcerer is here, gets more, gets a passive ability, gets like a, another ability for the first one and gives gets the, another ability and health regeneration to the squad by the uh, third ability, which is basically you want to co connect your mutated sorcerer to your deformed, to have like the mutated uh, mastery, you could say. So they have a big uh, synergy, especially with the abilities and passive abilities of the mutated sorcerer here. In the machine building, you have like your smoke bombs, you could say, your smoke shells. You have these coruscating flames and the mutated hulls, especially the mutated hulls on tier three is a must have if you have vehicles on the field and plan on having them to stay alive. In your Altar of Scenes, you only have your tier 4 research, which is, I think, only 250 requisition, 250 power, so really cheap in that sense, um, but can only be accessed from your tier 3 building. So you need to build a building, then you need to read, uh, do the research. So it's really late compared to um, different factions. I mean, Death Guard have it similarly, I think, also late in the tech up. Maybe this is too cheap, but I don't know, tier 4. In the last version wasn't a strong suit of Thousand Suns and to be honest still isn't really so having a cheaper tier 4 may help with this. And yeah here you get your Demon Prince, your Prosperator, your Angry Box and the research for your Lord of Change. And now the big upgrade building, the Dark Library. The Dark Library has these Sorcerer upgrades, this, this and this, followed up by these Exalted Relics for your Ariman. What I'm, I'm, I'm uh, really sorry what the exact bonuses are. I do not remember. It's like uh, defensive wise as well. Yeah, they, one of them gives them uh, a uh, damage reduction aura. I think uh, if you see it here, it needs, it should be um, this one, the second one gives you damage reduction aura, I think. Yeah, passive for all your sorcerers. This is passive for your squad leaders as well. So this is the damage reduction aura. And the last one, there's one that gives, I think, no, this is like the important one. The second one gives you damage reduction aura. the other ones give you a uh, spell recharge time and whatnot. So uh, must have basically for all builds for a uh, thousand suns. The first upgrade is also really cheap. So a must go as well as soon as you have your dark library. The dark library is not required to tag to tier two, but is required to tag to tier three. So you add, least want to get the library on your way to tier two. Um, but I would recommend get, get the dark library as soon as your production building finishes because it is cheap and you get the research, some of the resources, resources back uh, as well. Then you have this one, which I totally forgot what it does, but it um, affects, um, do we have it here? Yeah, it gives them passive ability, I think. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot. But then you have these two spell research. This is the, the, I think it's called Twisted Path, the stun ability for your chosen. This one is the warp space and warp time. Research for your Rubik Marine Sorcerers and your uh, Practical and Coven Sorcerers. This one is for your Sorcerer Lord, increases the recharge time, uh, uh, increases the recharge rate of his spells and it does it even more. 
This one is the upgrade for your Thrall Wizards, increasing their squad size and giving them um, ex uh, access to the uh, Warp Storm ability, the, the Suicide ability. This one increases the uh, um, weapon loadout from your Rubik Marines from 4 to 8 and also should affect your Rubik, um, your Dreadnoughts. And this is the um, Telekinesis and Ward um, spells for your Chosen. Yeah, last but not least, the, resu uh, the resource upgrades as the usual, and here you can see the, the different um, add-ons for your, uh, or upgrades for your um, turret, like this is more damage and this is the infiltration one. Okay, about the units, yeah, this is a little uh, convoluted here because of the different paths and abilities. I have them like uh, in different colors and yeah, it, it looks convoluted, but it's more easy to understand in the game that you get need to get the first one and the second one and the third one. Um, yeah. Then all the spells of Ahriman here as well. Um, what is also important, not, not as important, but interesting is that you have special Rurik Marines in survival. I do not think they get any special abilities or weapons, but probably have like um, better health and whatnot. Or stats in general. Um, let's talk about tier strength, something I um, like to talk about in these tech trees. Uh, the tier one for Thousand Suns is strong to very strong because the fast capping, as I explained from the Star Wizards. And people may hate about Rubik means that they are slow, that they die too fast or whatever. They are an unbreakable unit in tier one. Oh my god, this is really strong. And the Screamers as well. They may feel frail, but the damage they put out is really high and they scale really good in tier 2 with the Demon upgrades and the uh, Swoop ability here, increasing their capabilities even more. They kind of fall off in tier 3, but for the early game where it matters, basically, where you get your... Um, either uh, get an advantage or lose the advantage in a the game, they are there and they will help you out big time. So tier 1 is strong to very strong. Tier 2 is um, good to very good as well because you have now your, your Chosen, which is the backbone of your army. There's no build basically in where you do not get Chosen in Tier 2. There's just too good to give up on. And then you can, um, if you are on the Demon Path, you get your uh, Herald of, of Siege as well and maybe some Horrors to support. And if you get some vehicles out, you would uh, prefer to have a Rhino probably. If you go for infantry, that is. If you did not go for infantry, you want to get it as well because you want to go to tier three at some point, and then you can get uh, this this deceiver. I think it's called because for this you need the demon gate as well. So if you are going demons and build a cold forge, you want to double down with this or get um, the coolest unit like the hellblade to support or uh, dreadnoughts. Um, tier three is pretty strong as well, but you see that it's kind of um, that the most units you have access in tier 2. So tier 2 is the, the strongest phase of a Thousand Suns. Then in tier 3 you, you can increase the capabilities of your existing units with upgrades, with more upgrades, with mutated hearts for your vehicles and whatnot, more upgrades in the Dark Library, some new units like the Predator and the really good... Um, give me a second. Whirlwind here. The Whirlwind is really good, but you need the Altar of Scenes, so it's tier 3.5. Um, similar to why where you need your um, teleporters. The, the Terminators are only here because they only require the Altar of Scenes, so they are tier 3 as well. So tier 3 is still good. You get some new units, like the Terminators in particular, if you go for uh, only for um, infantry, are a really big uh, increase of fighting capabilities, as is the Predator here but the most new units you get in tier two, as I said. So tier three is still strong. Um, and then tier four is uh, still a little light. Yes, you got new units like the Prosperator, your Le Trophy Lenturator, Iron Man was always here. And these two guys were always here as well. Um, but if you compare to like the late game of uh, different factions, like especially like tier two Titans and whatnot, it doesn't feel as strong um, as other factions. But who needs tier four? if you win the game in tier 2 and tier 3 because you are really strong there. So that's why I like Thousand Suns in this sense uh, more than uh, factions that are really, really good at late game because good 
luck getting there if your uh, lineup isn't as strong as it needs to be. So Thousand Suns really fun. I'm not really good with them, I have to admit. Um, I still got some, um, how should I say, build orders uh, for you. Not all of them should be, uh, are probably viable, but I still want to present them to you now. And here on the tech tree, uh, tech tree document, I was saying the build order document, the tech tree we were already. And we have five build orders I have for you. The first one is one of my favorites, which is, to be honest, not a, the strongest opener. It's the cultist opener. You, you open up with the two thrall results still because you want to have uh, the builders and the uh, capping uh, capabilities. Then you open two cultists into your sorcerer lord. And you get one or uh, either demons or warp gate. This is not used in tier one. It's only for getting your dark, dark library. The dark library requires one of those. And you want the dark library really fast because you want a cultist leader attached, um, attach your sorcerer lord to a squad and have it infiltrated sorcerer with tier one abilities, which is really nice to have. Um, so it's basically having invis squads to uh, annoy the enemy and uh, yeah, annoy basically yeah, annoy the enemy. Um, so you get a decently timed tier 2 and in tier 2 you can, uh, if you go for demons, you could add the Herald of Siege I like to the other <laughs> um, cultist squad to have like two leaders in uh, infiltrated squads, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, it, you're really weak in the early game. If an enemy f um, forces the issue, you most of the times uh, have the short end of the stick. So this is one that really works well against the AI because the AI doesn't know how to deal with infiltrated units. It really works well against uh, lesser experienced players because the lesser experienced players also struggle with dealing infiltrated units and the higher the skill level goes, the weaker this build order is. So um, fun build order, I like to go for it, but it's uh, not the optimal build order. One of the optimal build orders is one of the following two. The one is the Rubik opener I have for you here. You get two, two Thrall Wizards into your Sorcerer Lord and yeah, um, uh, just to uh, clarify it, I have here the specializations, the uh, um, Illusionist, Summoner and Warlock and have the uh, corresponding skill that I think is in this particular opener the best to choose. Um, you can always have here also the clone, but yeah, this one is the Confusion, which is I think the best one here. Um, yeah, you get two Rubik Marines, still get a decently timed um, Dark Library, basically as soon as you have your infantry out, do not reinforce it, get your Dark Library first because you want to have your source, um, your um, aspiring sources here for the movement speed, for the Doom Bolts. Also get the first upgrade, get the upgrade for this sorcerer and which also affects this um, aspiring sorcerers as well. So these are it's a really a good tier 1.5 army. You can maybe think of adding another Rubik uh, Marine as well. And then you get to tier two uh, with a good infantry um, army here, which really likes to have a Rhino in tier two, for example, because then you can um, uh, drive these units around, give them some special weapons in tier two as well. And yeah, be really mobile. Attach your, uh, your sorcerer as well, so you can also jump into the uh, Rhino, basically like your Chaos Marines would do with uh, Heavy Bolters, for example. Then you have the Screamer opener, which is basically your demon opener. You, it, it looks like really similar. You get like, instead of two Rubik's, you get two Screamers. Um, and then the upgrade, the upgrade is really expensive in terms of power. Then you see the difference here. It is one more generator because yeah, these guys cost power to produce and power to reinforce. The Rubik Marines do not. And the upgrade is also um, more heavy into the power department. So that's why um, you want to probably have a third a uh, rune scrap construct before uh, heading to tier three. The second to last one is a tier two rush. Also can work, can backfire a lot. Um, you see one difference here in the, um, how should I say, in the recommendations. As you try to avoid combat here for in this build order, the clone is better to um, distract the enemy, have some more to, um, yeah, scout whatever so this is better than having like the confusion because the confusion is really good if you want to fight uh, an enemy squad is pinned down and then you confuse it and it fights these other doesn't fight back and you can chuck on it so um in this particular build order you want to avoid combat as much as possible in tier one so there are the clone for example 
is better used or you go directly for summon to have like something to throw at your enemy as well and the last one is what i call a one 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 build a really uh it's more like a how should i say idea i had in my head i, I used it against the eye and it worked really well it is like as i said in the beginning of the video you have like units that are really good at one thing but what if you get all of the units like not two rubik marines not two screamers but one each not two cultists but one cultist with the leader um why not why not do it um the problem with this is that the upgrades the, the special upgrades for your marines and your demons are really expensive and too expensive to have them um research them for one squad but still you get the um, very versatile army here. You get like your two uh, Thrall Wizards, as usual, get a Cultist and then your source a lot. The Cultist uh, uh, gets the leader later on, so you, have to, you still have the Infiltrated Commander here, which is really nice, but you still have a little backbone and a Rubik Marine with an Sorcerer, and later on, not too late, but if it works really well, if you're like on the offense with the Infiltrated Squad here with your Rubik Marines, then you have added your Demon Gate back at home, building a a screamer, the screamer you can put back into your warp gate to deep strike in. So you are like on the way to attacking while your um, screamers are built or while they are in the demon gate. So you have like a little surprise because nobody really expects to have screamers in their face when they say Rubik Marines. So this is one thing I would like to see some um, player with more skill than I uh, try to attempt it and see if it's viable or not. Because in my head, it's like really viable. And think about your tier two options. You have all the buildings. So basically the world is your oyster. You can get everything uh, you want to address what the enemy is building for you. So this one 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 build, I find really interesting. And yeah, I would like to see a, a good player try to attempt it and give me some feedback on it. So you out there, good players, <laughs> use it and tell me if it's good or not. <laughs> And speaking about good players, you may have noticed that I had the World Eater Guide last week and the Thousand Suns this week. And normally I said I go by the alphabet. Why do I switch it up? <laughs> because you hopefully have seen the uh, the tournament cast on the weekend, on Saturday, where Kukai played Thousand Suns in the tournament. And I wanted to have a tournament replay here as an example replay. And I chose the second game of GPR versus Kukai on Moonbase because it's a more standard opener there. It's not as wacky as the first game. Uh, I, I would recommend to watch the tournament cast before uh, to not get spoiled because here I will only focus on um, Kukai's build order. So see you in the replay. And here we are in the replay where we have Kukai as the Thousand Suns versus Kepiar as the Chaos Demons. So, um, as I said, this is the second game of the tournament where um, in the first round KPR faced um, Kukai. Kukai um, actually chose his first faction was Necrons but got banned by uh, KPR so he has chose uh, his secondary faction which is the Chaos, the Chaos Demons, I say, the Thousand Suns. He goes for Demon Opener. This is the exact same opener as he did in game one and you can see here from now my build order stays true. He goes for a uh, Runeswell Contact and a Demon Gate for uh, three Thrall Wizards. We see one Thrall Wizards um, prioritizing the far uh, point because Chaos Demons are really good at decapping stuff. So that's why he chose to do this. The first, um, uh, how should I say, Thrall Wizard. I think it's the first one, was it? Or was this the first one? Even reinforcing them once, fearing some uh, harassment probably. So he uh, reinforced them here. The Source of Lord is on the way, Demon Gate is almost finished and we will most certainly see one and later two uh, Screamers. So one right away because you want to have um, resources for your listening posts, I think. He even prioritizes the listening posts, I think. Yes, prioritizes the listening posts before getting the Screamers, something I would also recommend because these listening posts, the Silver Spice, give you back resources once they are built. And yeah, the few seconds you have your Screamers earlier is almost almost not worth it because the screamers itself cannot do a whole bunch you want to have your sorcerer to uh, um, uh, help out of it ah interesting he, he reinforced him because he wants to scout something that uh, lesser or medium even high level players sometimes forget he scouts but he sees he sees a really uh, decently timed demon lord so nothing special and he will also see 
what does he go for? He sees some horrors. So it's like more or less a standard uh, opener. He sees some horrors, um, uh, like horrors, like the furies. So he kind of knows, okay, it's, it's more or less standard opener with uh, pink horrors. So now he also knows where the pink horrors are. So maybe he can put uh, the screamers there, getting a second squad of screamers, as I also recommended. So having two squads of screamers early on. And I will keep the demon gate selected for now to see if he goes for the upgrade as well. For the specialization, he goes for the um, warlock specialization with uh, the, the chains. The chains are really nice against, let's say, what he did use in the first game was, uh, for example, against the enemy commander to get the demon lord here. If he chains the demon lord and goes in melee with the sorcerer lord, he does a hell of a lot of damage because, as I said, the sorcerer lord is just so good. You can also use it against ranged squads and having your screamers hack away at them, which is a very good idea to use as well because the screamers have sometimes trouble to connect into melee. We see now here a Harris into the main base or even scout and now um, going over here as well. As we do not see the uh, upgrade yet because it costs I think 100 power and he uses quite a lot of power to reinforce so he needs another construct at some point. But now he's upgrading even a silver spire here. Probably upgrading another one. Oh no, he goes for the dark library. Also a really nice choice. Um, I think you also need the dark library for the upgrades as well. So getting the uh, dark library and a rune scrap construct. So as far uh, uh, as it is now, it's uh, very much uh, according to my build order. In the, in the middle here, he forces out the pink horrors. The pink horrors do not want to engage these tumors of Singe. He has the fury support, but we all know how, how, um, how should I say, Fragile Fury Sin, especially um, now that you have also the Sorcerer Lord, it's one, two, three squads against one, two, three squads. Getting another horror squad, if I remember correctly, yes. But um, Screamers here take advantage of the uh, um, Demonic Shrines, do not having uh, guns or anything to defend themselves, so they can hack away. And the damage isn't too, uh, too how should I say, isn't like as low. Oh, he goes for a third Screamer, so this is now. Um, Something I have not on my build order. The screamers are limited to three as well as you can see. And he goes for the full limit. Jumping in with the screamers here. Having now the chains on the one horror squad. So they cannot move away. The second horror squad is attacked. And these now focus on this chained um, horrors here. Dealing a lot of damage we saw. The Chaos Lord ability going through. And here is a good example as you see. Yeah, this Chaos Lord should win, right? Because uh, the, the demon lord should win because it's a big old demon. Jokes on you. This is a big old sorcerer who also does like to fight. So you see, in the end, the, the demon lord goes down and not the, chaos, the, the sorcerer lord. The sorcerer lord is tanky and more, most importantly does a lot of stun things. So we have some horrors here and horrors without melee support against two melee squads. Even like the third melee squad is somewhere. Is it? One. One, two, three. So the one is almost down. No, it's seven. It's only two. Wait, there are two here. One with five, one with six or something. So they have all three units around. He got, goes for the upgrades. Increases the health. Increases the chance to uh, spawn blue horrors. But yeah, it increases the health. It's uh, really good. As I said, these guys can feel a little, little um, fragile at times. But yeah, they most certainly are not. As you can see, the problem for the Chaos Demons in this particular is that they, their defenses aren't the best. You don't not have any guns or firing bits on your demonic shrines so the Screamers can go in and out whatever they please. I think this is a little damage they take from being nearby. Um, strength and the morale. Solifada is hold, crunch bonus demonic power. while hurting the morale of foes. So hurting the morale of foes is interesting against the Screamers, because if they have no morale, they break. Tier two on the way, and we have three Runescribe Constructs, also kind of similar to my build order. And yeah, I heard a Screamer. Yeah, now we have Screamer and Screamer action in this game, so it's <laughs> all the Screamers for days, you could say. So the Chaos Demons are, are tier two already. No, no, these are tier one. Screamers are tier one, sorry. Tier 2 almost finished for Kuka and we will see what he goes for. He goes for the Sorcerer upgrades as I said. Uh, Amor's increasing their health. 
so really nice to have even more health he has now 1.4k uh, we will see how much it is once he has research done he's now for the time going back you see here um, having a thrall wizard attacking here for some reason having a lot of screamers they are all getting reinforced and probably chucked inside the demonic gate um, and now it's chosen because chosen are yeah your go-to unit i'm really interested in how high the health is now Ah, it is only for it does not affect the source so interesting but here he saw so the breath of unlife used to heal the source a lot really nicely done I'm getting the second a cane ward chaos aspiring chosen chosen also interesting I thought it affects the source a lot as well jokes on me but the upgrade does affect the health of the chosen here other than that we have now the chosen hitting the field even the herald of scenes so we have three commander units if you cho say the chosen are commanders there's three screamers of scenes if they are all alive they are alive maybe getting even their secondary upgrade here but this is a whole a lot of squads to choose so we have four melee squads and a sorcerer lot here um all going to toe to the enemy which has no shooty bits as i said earlier and these these thrall wizards slowly but surely fighting through the demonic shrine and it is the um, the thrall wizard leader which does some damage it is not the thrall wizards themselves the thrall wizards themselves are really um weak in a sense in uh, all regards but the leader is not we have now jumping in and out of the different uh, screamers um i think on a total toe fight the screamers of siege of uh thousand suns would win mainly because they have more upgrades now i think if the upgrades for the Demons are better and they are near their buildings, which they are. They can win a fight, but yeah, a lot of screamers here. But there are chains as well. Ah, this is really, really um, hard to see because the chains, we have now the Twisting Path research, so they use it directly on the pink horrors. They are now stunned and getting attacked into melee. They cannot run away and get hacked down by these mighty uh, sorcerer swords. So this is, yeah, all the control in the world. This is why the tier 2 of a thousand suns is also really good you have so much control especially if you go for the warlock specializations you have you have uh, the, the the chains from your sorcerer you have to slow from your chosen you have to stun from your chosen you have so many crowd control abilities that it is really hard to play against even in the enemy base you see here yeah and this is probably uh, i think this is the game so gg will be called out uh, soonish so as usual with my guides videos ending if you have anything that I have missed that I have told you uh, false information that um, you want to add or whatnot please let me know in the comments if it's like really insightful comment I always pin it as well um, if you liked it leave a like in the comments as well leave a like leave a comment leave a subscribe if you want more um, guide videos and casts and whatnot yeah and as usual um, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye!